Hi, my name is Kwekwe. I'm a pharmacist. And I know if you're like me, you are worried or concerned sometimes about blood sugar spikes when we enjoy some of these delicious carbohydrates that you and I agree that we like to enjoy from time to time. Well, I have good news for you because in this video, I'm going to share with you six science-backed ways to maintain stable blood sugar levels or to prevent blood sugar spikes when we indulge in some of these carbohydrates. The first one is to pair carbs with healthy fats and proteins. Now, including healthy fats and proteins in your meal goes beyond just supplying your body with the good nutrients that it needs. But what happens is that that inclusion kind of slows down the absorption of glucose into the bloodstream. So you have a gradual rise of glucose and you don't have those rapid spikes that occur when you eat the carbohydrates alone. Additionally, healthy fats contribute to the feeling of fullness and, this, and satisfaction. So it, it prevents you from eating too much or it, it kind of tones down some of the cravings that we get when we eat just carbs alone. So nuts, seeds, avocado, olive oil, fatty fish, these are all good sources of healthy fats and proteins that we can easily incorporate into our diet. So for example, instead of just consuming maybe say white bread with some marmalade or some jam, you could rather actually opt for whole wheat bread, you know, topped with some almond butter or some peanut butter. That is definitely a better alternative. You have a combination of complex carbohydrates with some protein and some fat in there. Another option is that instead of eating your oatmeal alone, you can pair with some almonds. You can also add some flax seeds in there. That would go a long way to prevent the blood sugar spikes that would ordinarily have happened if the oatmeal had been eaten alone. Number two, incorporate some apple cider vinegar or lemon juice into your diet. Apple cider vinegar and lemon juice are all acidic and there have been several studies to show that they actually slow down the digestion of starches and they reduce the rate at which the sugar is absorbed into the bloodstream to cause the spikes that we dread so much. So in one particular study which was conducted at Land University in Sweden, they gave 12 healthy individuals a piece of bread that contained about 50 grams of fat and then they gave them different quantities of, of apple cider vinegar. One group got apple cider vinegar with a concentration of acetic acid at about 18 millimoles per liter, another one had at 23 millimoles per liter, and the other had 28 millimoles per liter. And then they gave them two hours, and then after two hours, blood samples were drawn. And as you may have already have guessed, there was an inverse relationship between the amount of apple cider vinegar that was taken with the bread and the blood sugar levels. So in other words, the, the group that had the 18 millimoles of acetic acid in apple cider vinegar had the highest blood sugar levels, and the, the group that had the 28 millimoles of acetic acid had the minimal or the, the least amount of blood sugar in their bloodstream. So they were able to conclude that including or pairing uh, acidic substances such as lemon juice and apple cider vinegar actually mitigates the rapid rise of blood sugar levels when you consume a carbohydrate. Number three is to time your carb intake. Now, I hope this is not coming as a surprise to you, but timing your carb intake is a strategic way to manage your blood sugar responses. Now, there's been several studies that have been shown that, especially after intense or vigorous exercise, insulin sensitivity is at its peak. So it will not be a bad idea to time your carbs to align with the time when you've actually been active or you've engaged in some form of physical activity or exercise because then your insulin is very sensitive and therefore it's able to manage the, the carbs or the sugar that you've put in the system and prevent that spike that we are trying to avoid. See, the thing about insulin sensitivity is that if your insulin is very sensitive, then you need less of it to manage the amount of glucose that is in the body. On the other hand, if your insulin is not sensitive, that is when you need lots of it. So your body just keeps pouring insulin into the system just to take care of just some few grams of carbs that you've ate. So uh, definitely timing your carbs after exercise when your insulin sensitivity is at its peak, it's a good way to go. Number four is the flip side of this, that is taking a walk after consuming carbs. Going for a walk about 10 to 15 minutes after consuming carbs is also an excellent way to prevent blood sugar spikes. This is because walking stimulates the muscles to absorb the glucose that has been put into the system and minimizes the insulin response. So about a 15 to 30 minute walk after consuming carbs is definitely a good way to prevent those blood sugar spikes. So in one particular study, they had 14 people who had been recently diagnosed with type 2 diabetes and they were given a carbohydrate meal and they were made to walk at different uh, paces. So one was asked to walk at just their normal pace. One uh, group walked at 10% faster than their normal pace and another group walked at 20% 
faster than their normal pace. All the groups were made to work for 30 minutes and one hour later, their blood sugar levels were drawn. You guessed it again. Well, there was another inverse relationship between how fast the people walked and their blood sugar levels. So in other words, the group that walked at their normal pace had the highest level of blood glucose levels and the group that walked at the fastest pace, which was at 20% faster than their normal rate, had the, the least amount of glucose in the body. So a little bit of brisk walking about 15 minutes or so after eating a high carb food for about 15 to 30 minutes works wonders for your blood sugar levels. Number five, choose complex carbs over simple or refined carbs. Complex carbs such as legumes, vegetables, and whole grain contain a lot of fiber. And what happens when you eat a lot of fiber is that it actually slows down the rate at which sugar is absorbed into the bloodstream. Now compare that to refined carbs such as uh, white bread, white rice, those typically have all their nutrients stripped of them. So basically when you eat it, it goes rapidly into the bloodstream. It causes a, a, a rapid insulin response and your blood sugar skyrockets. So as a general rule of thumb, aim to get about 25 grams of fiber from uh, legumes, vegetables, fruits and whole grain uh, in your diet per day. I mean, this is definitely a way to minimize those blood sugar spikes. And fiber also makes you full. So it prevents you from overeating and also to curb some of those cravings. Number six is to eat an overall balanced diet. And why do I say this? Well, you need a balanced diet because you need all the minerals and the vitamins that your body needs. Otherwise, what you're going to have is an impaired insulin function. So for example, magnesium is a key vitamin or key mineral that plays a role in insulin function. If you're deficient in magnesium, there's a tendency for you to have blood sugar spikes. So consider adding foods that are high in minerals like magnesium to your diet. Now I can think of avocados, I can think of pumpkin seeds, I can think of almonds, dark chocolate. Consider adding all these to your diet so you're not deficient in any of these minerals like magnesium because a deficiency will result in impaired glucose metabolism and that what would that happen ultimately with that is that you're going to experience those blood sugar spikes. I sure do hope you found some value in this video on your screen. It's another video that I think you may find interesting. Stay blessed. Catch you on the next video.